Hey, what is going on guys? We have seen a price jump in Bitcoin recently. It went from 5,700 to the current price of $7,500. That's more than 30% increase. In one of my previous videos, we have estimated that the average historical decrease in Bitcoin is approximately 76%. In today's video, we will try to estimate what is an average historical increase in Bitcoin's price and how likely that Bitcoin will hit those numbers. First, let's just try to recap how we estimated an average historical decrease of Bitcoin price. Let's go back all the way to January 2011 when price of the single Bitcoin was only 6 cents. At high sight, you wish you would buy a Bitcoin for only 6 cents. <laughs> Even Peter Chief would. In July 2011, Bitcoin price skyrocketed to a new all-time high to $30 per coin. Then few months later, it dropped to almost $2. That's 93% decrease. Let's keep those numbers in mind because we will need them to calculate an average historical drop. Fast forward two years all the way to January 2013 when Bitcoin's price had a major spike and it increased from $15 per coin all the way to $213 in early April the same year. This happiness and hopes of Bitcoin Lambos didn't last a while. Just literally a week later, price has plummeted all the way to $60. That's almost 72% drop. After that drop, price slightly increased and remained stable for the most part. Until October 2013, when Bitcoin slowly reached to $130 per coin. One month later, the Bitcoin price has skyrocketed again to new all-time high all the way to $1130 per coin. Everyone was shocked. Maybe some of those kids even liquidated their position to get those Lambos and Bitcoin unsurprisingly decreased again all the way to $300. That's another 72% drop. After that drop, the price of the single Bitcoin remained stable and fluctuated between $200 and $300 per coin. From January 2015 all the way to January 2016 did not really do anything for entire year. Many people lost hope and interest in Bitcoin and left the market. What I wanted to tell you guys is that in financial market and even in cryptocurrency market is not your IQ and your intelligence the most important, but it is rather your emotional stability and patience that will lead you to success. If you do not have patience, you should not be in this market. Anyways, since January 2016, Bitcoin started getting some momentum and it reached all the way to $1,000 in January 2017. During the same year, it reached to new all-time high levels and I'm pretty sure you remember this, more than $19,000 per coin. Most of people thought the trend will never end and this is the place where you can get free money. Haha, <laughs> that's funny, no free money for you my friend. Only major banks are eligible for free money from Federal Reserve, which bailed them out in 2008. What kind of capitalistic system is this? We have capitalism while banks generate gains and we have socialism while banks lose money. Ok, let's not get carried away. Bitcoin decreased from $19,000 all the way to $6,000. That's a 68% drop. Assuming this is the floor, if it isn't, then the floor is nearby. So now we can calculate an average historical drop that Bitcoin has experienced since it was released. 93% plus 72% plus 72% plus 68% divided by 4 equals to 76%. So 76% is an average historical drop. This is just a recap what we have estimated in my previous video. Now let's move up a notch and try to estimate an average historical increase. So let's go back to April 2011 when one Bitcoin was around a dollar. It skyrocketed all the way to $30. That's a 2900% increase. Wow, who wouldn't want that? Let's move on to February 2013 when a single Bitcoin was around $20 and it increased all the way to $213. That's 
that's almost 1000% increase. Not bad at all. Let's go to the next rally, which happened later the same year. In September 2013, a price of a single Bitcoin was around 100 bucks. The price has increased all the way to $1130. That's a 1030% increase. Very appealing rate of returns. Now, finally, let's go back to the most recent times that probably familiar to most of us. January 2017 when Bitcoin increased from $1,000 all the way to $19,000. That's a 1,800% increase. This may seem as unbelievable return. To get this kind of return from the stock market, you would have to go back 40 years and purchase S&P 500 for $150 per share in early 1980s. Now it cost around $2,800 per share. So, let's calculate an average historical increase that Bitcoin's price had experienced since the existence. 2900% plus 1000% plus 1030% plus 1800% everything divided by 4 equals to almost 1700%. So, suppose Bitcoin will repeat its historical increase again from the recent bottom, let's round it up to $6,000 per coin. If Bitcoin price will increase by 1,700%, that would put the price of the single Bitcoin over $100,000. That would increase Bitcoin's market cap all the way to 1.7 trillion US dollars. Now the question is, if 1.7 trillion US dollars is realistic market cap for Bitcoin? Well, let's see. By now you should know that Bitcoin is an efficient money and great way to store value. So if you look at another asset to store value such as gold, which market capitalization consists of 8 trillion US dollars. If Bitcoin reaches to 1.7 trillion, that would be around 20% of gold's value. So the question is, if this is possible? Hell yeah it is possible, it's not only possible, it is probable. It's very likely that this is going to happen. In effect, I would argue that Bitcoin serves a better function as money than gold. Yes, yes, gold has a proven history records and it has been money for more than 5000 years. However, there are some advantages of using Bitcoin. First. Bitcoin scarce, it has a limited supply, there is only 21 million of them, and can never be more. I can tell you exactly what supply of the Bitcoin is going to be tomorrow, 1 year from today, or 10 years from today. Unlike gold, Bitcoin is easily divisible. One Bitcoin can be cut into 100 million pieces. Try to cut a kilo of gold into 100 million pieces. Bitcoin is by far the most divisible money we have ever seen. Bitcoin is also durable. Bitcoin exists because of distributed ledger. Surely enough if internet went down, most likely you wouldn't be able to use Bitcoin. But it is also true with any other form of payment system, including credit cards, PayPal, banks, and any other form of modern money. Bitcoin is fungible. Each Bitcoin is worth the same as any other. Every Bitcoin wallet tests if the Bitcoin is legitimate or not. Bitcoin cannot be counterfeited. Unlike gold, it cannot be filled with copper and colored. And most importantly, Bitcoin is highly portable. You can send it anywhere on earth, it moves easily crossing any border. It has no weight, no smell, no physical body that can be stopped. Bitcoin is the only form of money today that can be moved in distance without trusting a third party. It is the only form of money that does not require permission. Try to move few kilo of gold overseas and see how expensive and stressful you're going to get. Therefore, Bitcoin is the only form of money for people. So going back to the question if Bitcoin can take 20% of gold. Yes indeed it can, and most likely it will surpass gold over time. In effect, if we take a total global store of value including gold, collectible arts, real estates, and negative interest rate bonds, then the total market capitalization approximately would be 280 trillion US dollars. If Bitcoin will take only 5% of global store value, it would put the Bitcoin market cap to 14 trillion US dollars. 
or one coin would be $800,000. So this is the end, let me know what do you guys think about potential price of a Bitcoin. Do you think those numbers are realistic? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you are new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe for more animated videos about cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. Other than that, thank you for watching and see you next video.